More than 60% of people do trust the news on social media. One, two, three, four. Hi, everyone. We are here in Davos, here for the World Economic Forum. The AI house is a home for AI conversations with global leaders, corporate leaders. AI is the core of everything. Yes. The core message here is just using AI tools is not going to make you an AI native. Equality. I see music as a universal language. Uniting the world uh, in one song. As journalists, we really need to do more fast checking and to ensure that oh. all the information we're getting across to is totally curated and verified. As a journalist, I am a little afraid of how that's going. Hi everyone, welcome to SciTech Swiss Lifestyle. I'm Karina Schuster. I'm Ana Maria Montero. And we are here in Davos, here for the World Economic Forum's annual meeting. So we are just wrapping up a couple of experiences and a couple of takeaways that we had from Davos. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So I want to start asking, uh, how was Davos this year for you? You know, it was really, it was really diverse and it was really interesting. You know, uh, so 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 the people that have never been to uh, to Davos and haven't haven't had this experience, you know, it, you have the World Economic Forum, which is the the official meeting that takes place within kind of like a compound area. And then outside of it, you have so many outside events. It's like a whole separate event, which is the outside of the West events that are that involve um, different corporations and companies and universities. I mean, That's run the true. gamut represents all kinds of uh, of initiatives. And I think that the side events are even fuller, if you're asking me. Yeah, I mean, maybe they're not. You know, they're not uh, determining global policy, but uh, but there's but there's uh, there's a lot of but there's still a lot of really significant things being done and you're meeting people like you said that are changing the game from pharma to technology to um diversity and inclusion so definitely one of the best experiences for me was attending the female poi event also when i had the chance to interview martina hooks which is she's one of the best journalists that i know that i fully respect and also i'm really grateful to have been part of the 195 women uh singing the word equality in their native tongue for for this for this wonderful song that it's really promoting gender inclusion harmony diversity and definitely we had a very interesting chat on how to use technology also with, with music i think it's it's really a nice combination adolat barazi al musawat igualdad igualdad equality igualdad the idea really came about uh, when I was a young girl. I always dreamt of uh, uniting the world uh, in one song, kind of uh, we are the world, but by women only. And so when uh, I met Major and our team, I just felt like this was the right moment in time, also from a geopolitical environment, uh, an economic environment uh, in the world, that uh, we really bring all the women, the beauty and our strength and our resilience together in a one song and uh, we found one in every nation uh, in the world and so all we want them to do is say the word equality in their native form, national language and then uh, major produced uh, the song with uh, very special uh, features. Yeah, when Martina brought to me the idea of bringing together women, um, all of these women around the world, 
Um, I thought it was great because uh, I see music as a universal language. So matching with all of the different languages, um, it was like a beautiful connection. And yes, I think the human voice is also the best instrument. So it was an amazing opportunity to bring all of these instruments together from all over the world in one in one place. So grateful to be a part of it. Um, from a creative process, we wanted to include, as she mentioned, we wanted to include what is known as the love frequency because all of these women together um, is just with so much love and overwhelming energy of love and I think that that's what uh, that's what we like to represent. So including that along with the heartbeat for the rhythm and which is also the first sign of life for many mothers. Um, so this is like the beginning and also what keeps us going, our heart and when we when we act from our heart it, we do uh, we are thoughtful of others and we are like very kind and things like this. So the art being symbolic in that, as well as the birds, which represent freedom and the ability to soar to new heights and new levels. Equality. I did not use any um, artificial intelligence um, for the creation. We just cre used it organically. Um, we were able to just go in the studio in Los Angeles and I played some of the instruments and the heartbeat is a recorded heartbeat from, it's not my heartbeat, but it's actually recorded. The birds I recorded myself. So um, yeah, we just used some elements that we all had together and and put it in there. So it's more of a, a combination of layers um, rather than um, something like synthetic or AI. Genetic. It's just striking uh, to see that still today in uh, 2025, there is a huge uh, gender uh, equality gap. I think according to the World Economic Forum's uh, global gender gap report uh, from last year, the index shows that we're still 134 um, years uh, behind until uh, we reach uh, gender equality. That's like five generations uh, beyond. And what about you and what about the AI house? What yes, that was super there? cool. So so there is among these houses that we described, you know, so you have a South Africa house, you have a Brazil house, you have a Deloitte house, you have a Qualcomm house, you've got a Switzerland house, honestly. Um, a trust house. A, a trust house. Yeah, the trust so, house. There's all kinds. I don't know. <laughs> I haven't been in there, but yes, there's also a trust. There's a crypto house. I mean, it runs the gamut. But of course, one of them is the AI house. is a home for AI conversations with global leaders, with, with corporate leaders. And, um, and I was a moderator in one of those sessions where we talked about supply chain management, which is not, maybe not sounding very sexy, but it's super important for any business. And it was wonderful. It was so cool. I mean, it, it's a small room for like 70 people, but it was standing room. There must've been like 130 people in there. Everybody is so interested. And the, 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 the audience asked really fantastic questions. And I really, it was really a, a wonderful experience. And I'm, you know, it's a, not just that it's about me, but also the topics that were, that were covered you can tell where people's heads are, that they're afraid for the future of creativity. They're afraid for the, for the future of force of labor. Everybody's trying to understand what the market is going to look like, what the labor market is going to look like sometime from now. So I think it's uh, really overwhelming, especially uh, seeing the news and what's been happening lately. And also to see, especially also the trust in technology, as we've been discussing before. And I think that when I think about trust and technology, for me as a journalist, I, I always advocate for fast checking. Mm -hmm. I think it's uh, it's really important. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And especially also when, when you see... Uh, that a lot of people do trust uh, the news on social media. If we if we check, for example, one of the researchers from the Pew Center Research, more than 60% of people do trust the news on social media. Therefore, I think that as journalists, we really need to, we are on a mission to definitely to do more fast checking and to ensure that all the information we're getting across to is 
totally accurate and verified. And mm -hmm. So we need this kind of filter. I am as a as a journalist, I am I'm I am also a little afraid of how that's going. You know, I, I am afraid that we that we may be losing some of these um, filters that we've had thus far. So we'll have to see how that plays out. Um, again, adapting, you're always having to adapt. And, and with technology, there's always this adaptation process. So, so you know, hopefully that moves in the right direction. I'm, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm moderately concerned, you know, and, and also I'm moderately concerned for what that means for the established press, you know, for the pressure that, that is being felt around, you know, tightening controls and, and, and less freedom to express and these kinds of things that we could that unpack that's, for like two yeah, hours exactly, so exactly. so so, re, let, so let's move forward and, and think so would you is this an experience that you would repeat actually yes i think that definitely each year is different i feel like last year was so different from this year you know mm -hmm. because the topic was also building trust in technology and i feel like it's you know you see a lot of intersection between web3 and ai and definitely i i think that most of the events that i um i've been attending are web3 related mm -hmm. and you see a lot of interesting use cases a lot of people building um a lot of interesting products and definitely um involving ai which is the buzzword for oh, sure hands down ai yeah. not only the ai house but it's everywhere it's everywhere it's yeah. everywhere it's in every conversation omnipresent Elm everybody presence. wants to know how do you, you might even it? use ai right now i mean it's ready to be <laughs> <laughs> but yeah everybody's trying to work out how to use it best what to do with it you know and, and again how to pocket those fears that come along with so we had an AI panel, not only about AI, but emerging uh, tech. So robotics, AI, and um, and even micro uh, mimicking, which means that you also do the same what nature does with AI. So that was the most uh, amazing, I would say, with some uh, fantastic experts. So that we see how does AI work in practice. And it's not only theory and not only chat GPT. So in this book, we talk about the future interconnectivity between the future trends. And this is what we see. So we don't see the trends like AI, blockchain, and isolation, we see it more as an interconnected world fully converge. And build a narrative. Yeah, and, it, and it's how these advanced technologies are interacting with future trends like the future of work, of mobility, of finance, and what are the opportunities. We are really focused on opportunities without looking you know, in depth in, in the risks, because this book is, is really for those that want to shape the future and those that want to shape the future. Let's be clear, they have to be imaginative leaders and look where others are not looking. So these are the types of topics that we you know, cover in the uh, book, and we're very excited. Yeah, Obviously, the one uh, connecting uh, factor, if I may add, is AI. Uh, is uh, is AI is the core of everything. Yeah, so we have one chapter okay, well, co-authored yeah, by Afi and Harry Abouri, and it talks about thinking like an AI native. <laughs> and in a lot of the she other are, chapters, are, we have uh, this <laughs> connection to what means AI and what does it mean for yeah, healthcare, okay. what does it mean for it. mobility. Oh, yeah. And this is very important. Part of the book, I would say. Yeah, and, and in each of the um, chapters, we offer a framework to start the journey of transforming from the current digital era into the intelligent era or the AI era. And, and it's very different. Uh, what the core message here is that just using AI tools is not going to make you an AI native business. It really has to be integrated in the enterprise, in the ecosystem, at different dimensions. And we talk about that and we're very excited. You you can tell. One of the biggest challenges are two, actually. The one is first one is the mindset. So a lot of people are still, as if you mentioned, very scared and fearful. So how can we make sure that people understand the beauty you can say of future tech and AI? And with the use cases we can show in particular in healthcare, it becomes very relevant to people. And they don't think about chat GDP just uh, finding a way to the next I don't know, event or something. Yeah, so it's it's making sure that it's a more of a society and culture shift 
That's the first challenge, I would say. Then the second challenge is security, privacy and data security, cybersecurity. Because the more we know that also from the banking field, the more we go digital, the more cybersecurity we have. And with a lot of the deep fakes we are seeing, it's, it's basically a nightmare because any photo you have can be misused. Yeah, and I would say, you know, part of this journey to, to overcome the challenges is surely education. You are always emphasizing this education so um, we, we don't increase digital gaps in societies. The more people understand the positive uh, potential and the risks so they can protect themselves, the better we are all off. We need to be more inclusive. Yesterday I heard about a company that um, I think it was Cohere, Cohere AI, and they are training their LLMs in in Japanese and other languages. We need that type of inclusivity too for you know these powerful tools. Apparently, and in- research has shown that Japanese is the best language for AI to learn because of the structure of the language. Yeah. yeah. So, so you know, it, it, the, the, and and at the end of the day, we need more collaboration. Whether we do it through you know. Uh, expanding the LLMs in other uh, languages in general. How do we move forward without leaving more people behind and and, uh, using these technologies for a better uh, world? Equality in using all types of resources, what we were discussing yesterday, and there's resources like healthcare, like education, everything. One of the topics that I really liked, especially more when it comes to inclusion and gender equality, and also I like the fact that David Beckham is really advocating for that, especially mm-hmm. not having daughters, and I think it's just an adorable moment. And I like to see also, especially last year when I was a panel speaker at the Web3 conference, I like to see that the majority of the speakers were women. So this really makes me happy to see that there is more inclusion and we're making small steps towards that. And definitely this year, I feel like it's more of a also spiritual journey for everyone. They're really producing this kind of topic in that's that's what I've seen. Mm-hmm. And with technology and with meditation and healing sounds, that's why I, I was also excited for it. And on that note. Like, yeah, on that note, it, it was a pleasure seeing you here, always. and I really hope that you guys you guys stay tuned because this podcast interview will definitely be wrapped up with a lot of ideas, and we are definitely looking forward um, for the next doubles next year, right? Absolutely, and of course to everything that's going to be happening in between, because there's going to be so much to talk about as we know this technology in the world is changing so fast. Thank you so much for following us. Please subscribe, and we'll see you next time. Keep watching. Stay tuned. Thank you so much.